It's time to welcome the Wine Ladies. With Georgia and Suzanne. An entertaining hour topped up with great ideas about wine, where to dine, anything and everything to do with the vine. Great conversation, lots of laughter, guests from all walks of life, food and wine, music, art, sports, and much more, all on The Wine Ladies. Hi everybody, it's us, The Wine Ladies. I'm Georgia. And I'm Suzanne, and welcome to The Wine Ladies, one sip at a time. We're live here today. And as always, I want to thank all of our friends on Facebook, Twitter, and thewineladies.com. And actually, I would like to add that our new website is finally yeah. up. Yeah. Cause to celebrate for sure. Absolutely. And now, right on our site, we'll be able to see all of our tweets and our retweets and all of your replies. So everybody, keep those coming. It's going to be fantastic. And we're going to enjoy that conversation, that dialogue with everybody. Mm -hmm, for sure. All right, so today, today's show is a little bit about celebration, including sparkling wine. Uh -huh. New Year's Eve is just around the corner. It's just about four weeks away. And how about winning a trip to New York City? Wow. Well, that's not a bad place to be on New Year's Eve, Suzanne. It would not be a bad place to be <laughs> at all. For sure not. But we are also going somewhere for New Year's Eve yes, pretty special are. this year. Mm -hmm. We are going to Las Vegas. We are going to be party partying at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino at the second annual Ultimate Party with a Purpose. It is a charitable event hosted by Club Curry, mm -hmm. raising funds for the agency Child Focus. And actually, Suzanne, we are going to be there the eve before New Year's Eve mm -hmm. because we're going to be emceeing the Founder Celebration Dinner at the Vintner's Grill in Las Vegas. And this also is a fundraiser for Child Focus. It's going to be an incredible night of wine, of food, fantastic art, wonderful entertainment. So clubcurry.com for more details and information on both events. And don't forget, that's $500 a ticket. Yeah, that's so right. save, your, <laughs> save your money for that. All right, so in addition to today, show on bubbly and celebration we'll mm -hmm. also be exploring the wonderful world of cheese I absolutely mm -hmm. adore cheese and um, we will be sampling a range of award-winning uh, selected cheeses under the guidance of one of the world's leading experts in this area mm -hmm. and she has <laughs> come all the way from across the pond my oh, idea. Oh, yes, indeed. Yes. Now listen let's quickly raise our glasses with our traditional toes before okay. we move on to the show. Cheers, Cheers, everybody, to having a great show and to everybody out there. And in our glasses, I don't know if everybody can tell out there, but there's a little <laughs> bit of bubbly in our glasses. So we're going to learn a little bit more about what we've got in them in just a little bit. All right, so let's introduce our guests on the show today. Joining us from one of our favorite wineries, from Colio Estates, we have got the marketing and sales co coordinator, um, Allison Modesto, is with us today. Hello, Allison. Welcome back, and you look gorgeous, my dear. Thank you. It's <laughs> good to be here. Thanks for having me. Good to see you. And, of course, again, lots of girl power here today. We'd also like to uh, welcome Susie Padre Barrett. I want to make sure I said that right. Oh, yes. Area manager. Uh, you've been here before, Susie. Great to have you back again. I'm glad to be and pass the cheese, please. <laughs> My goodness, is anyone else's mouth watering? I know mine Salivating is. over here. We'd like to welcome here all the way from London, England, the cheese, a cheese specialist, an expert, an author of 11 books, the founder of the <laughs> British Cheese Awards. I didn't even know there were British Cheese Awards. Indeed. And her own collection of cheeses called Simply the Best. Welcome Juliet Harbutt to the show. Well, thank you very much. That was a marvelous introduction. <laughs> 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 now you've got a tough act you've got to follow, but by the smell that is emanating through this room, oh my goodness, it seems like that's going to be seamless. That looks and smells fantastic what you brought in here today. Well, they are certainly a fantastic range of cheeses, and uh, it was very hard to decide just on three uh -huh. cheeses to bring in today. Had I known that we were doing um, such a lovely Riesling, I think I might have um, slipped in another cheese that goes quite ah. well as well. Uh, sheep's milk cheese tends to go very well with a Riesling. Okay. Um, but if you would like to taste some of these cheeses, if you're ready for that, I think we should give it a go. Don't well, we're going to get right into it. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> would you like me to tell you a bit I more like about it I like the sound of that. <laughs> all right. That's fantastic. So, um, now, first of all, maybe you can tell us, Juliet, there are different kinds of cheeses, I guess. Is there sort of a way to categorize them and then maybe 
there, these cheeses are all like within different categories? Absolutely, and in fact, um, it's because the cheeses aren't clearly categorized in the supermarkets um, in Canada and in America as well. Yeah, it's all like one big it's, pile of yeah. stuff. <laughs> and, and apparently there is a system to it, but even someone like myself who knows about cheese, I go in there and I'm going, I have no idea what you know, the system is, mm -hmm. or it's not very clear. Mm -hmm. And so the book that I wrote, part of the reason that I wrote it was that I wanted to get it uh, to explain to people that actually cheese can be broken down into just um, seven very simple categories. Okay. And okay. really by doing that it's the same thing as when we broke the wines down into, instead of doing it by country and when people couldn't really understand wines, when you broke them down into, into their wine varieties, people suddenly went, oh. Aha, now we get it. And exactly. Mm. It's so easy. Uh -huh. And so with cheese there are very simple categories. You have fresh cheeses okay. and fresh cheeses have uh, no rind. Okay. They're very um, clean, fresh, lemony flavour, and they have quite a high moisture Give us content. an example of one. Um, well, they just... Sorry, can I... Um, sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, she's on a roll, <laughs> Suzanne. <Okay. laughs> Go ahead, Julia. So, okay, a fresh cheese, for example, something yes. like mozzarella um, okay. or, you know, ricotta or something like uh -huh. maybe halloumi. So they have no rind, they're very fresh flavoured, lemony, clean flavoured, short shelf life and a high moisture content. Oh, That's okay. fresh. So, mozzarella. Fresh. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Then you have soft white cheeses, and the classic examples of a soft white are something like a camembert or a brie. Oh, okay. And they have okay. the white rind on the outside. But there are thousands of examples worldwide. They can be made with cow, goat, sheep, buffalo. And in fact, I've even had a camembert, which was made from camel's milk. Camel's oh, milk. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And it's wow. probably about as weird as it sounds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you tasted one of those? Yeah, I have. Was it lumpy? Oh. I need to know. And uh, it wasn't lumpy. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't hairy either. Oh, okay, good. Okay. That's good so thing. neither lumpy nor hairy. <laughs> Did it have um, a lot of moisture? It had a lot of moisture. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> oh boy. Oh, okay. There you go. All right, moving on. Moving right, rapidly. So that's on. Soft white with a rind. <laughs> yep. At number three. Then you have semi-soft cheeses, and those nice. are the kind of elasticy, rubbery type cheeses. They okay. range from something like an Edam uh -huh. um, to a cheese which we call a wash rind cheeses, which are those orange sticky rinded cheeses which smell pretty impressive. Is that um, like an ochre cheese like we have uh, here in Quebec? Yes, you know? like the ochre is a very mild example of what they can be like. Okay. The other end of the scale is like a Chambaton or a Poisse. Uh -huh. um, or when we have some in England, it's called Stinking Bishop. Stinky oh, Bishop. Stinking Bishop. Not the vicar, but the Stinky Bishop. Yes, or <laughs> Le Vec qui Pew, which is even better in French. Um, and uh, so they're quite strong, smelly cheeses. Okay. Then you have hard cheeses, which are quite obvious. They are hard, but they can range from like quite your crumbly. cheddar. Cheddar. cheddar? Mm -hmm. Parmesan, whatever. Mm -hmm. Oh, Parmesan. Yes. Then you have blue cheeses, okay. which I think we can all figure those ones out for ourselves. Yeah. And then flavor added. Ah. Flavor, flavor added. added. Like the ones with the truffle in it, Absolutely. like that kind of oh. thing. And, so, and, and, okay. and flavor added could be part of all of these, um, in a sense. No, no, but basically what we tend to say is that the flavor added cheeses are those which are hard cheeses to which something had been added to them because that's uh -huh. um, a big category, whereas it's quite common to traditionally to have added flavors to soft cheeses, uh, to the, like the fresh cheeses. For example, halloumi has always added mint and so we keep those in the fresh category. Uh -huh. okay. um, whereas the flavor added tend to be like Wensleydale with um, fruit cake and all the other strange things that they add, mm. um, cheddar with chives, um, and those sort of combinations. Now how many okay. different cheeses exist in the world approximately? Well, are we talking there thousands are over or? 700 different cheeses made in Britain alone, which is more than they make wow. in France. In um, America, I know that they make over 1,100 different cheeses. If you call cheddar one, for example, um, in Canada, I don't know. Um, I I've don't yet know to why. find out. But that's interesting because a lot of people, I think, think of France as like the cheese capital. Mm -hmm. But here you're saying, I guess that's why you started the British Cheese Awards <laughs> to let everybody know. No, yeah, there's exactly. another capital of cheese. <laughs> yes, but it's also that um, traditionally, in Europe, um, the same cheese was made in different areas. And uh -huh. so lots of cheesemakers made Banon and lots of cheesemakers made ah, okay. uh, Sancerre or, or um, Croton. Um, and so you might have 10 or 12 little cheesemakers making the same cheese. Ah. We did the same thing in, in England, but we made less cheeses and they were often quite big. But sadly, we were decimated um, by two world wars. Uh -huh. And it's kind of decimated our dairy industry and obviously the people who worked within it. And so we lost a lot of the traditional uh, cheese makers, okay. and the production shrunk, 
and when it restarted, it started sort of more all over the country with different people making cheeses uh -huh. in different parts of the country. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then what's Let's happened see. is in the last sort of 35 years, there's been an explosion of artisan cheeses throughout the world, not just in Britain, uh -huh. but in Canada and America and New Zealand and Australia. Yes. In kind of the same way as the wines, but not so obviously, mm -hmm. uh -huh. because cheese is a lot more difficult, if you like, How do you to become transport. a cheese expert? Mm. How did do you? Well, you just eat you staggering just eat quantities of cheese, and then someone says, "You are a cheese expert." <laughs> so Suzanne, start I now, Suzanne. That. We could, <laughs> you know. I just and write a couple of books, I suppose, yeah, yes. too. Well, you can do that. eleven <laughs> books. That's unbelievable. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. I did want to say that I know that Juliet is going to have to rush off. Not yet. Not yet. Uh, but you've got another book signing that you're going to. That you're going to have to get off too. And we do want to taste the cheeses, and we do want to taste the wonderful sparkling wine. That uh, from Colio Estate, so the girls' night out wines that mm -hmm. um, Allison and Susie have brought in. So and there's and then we also have a beautiful Chardonnay. So we're focusing a little bit here on the cheese because Juliet has to run off. But and we we're going to go to a break. But okay. before we go to a break, I know Juliet's brought a beautiful book, the finest selection in the world cheese book, mm -hmm. and we're going to be giving that away as a Facebook uh, fan page prize. Mm -hmm. So we've got a trivia question. We do. So why don't we ask the trivia question? All right. And we'll give the answer, so and we'll do that a couple of times, so okay. the people will listen to the show and they'll have a chance to, to win the book. Sounds good. So what was the question we came up with? I think it was, um, what is it? Five counties? Is three. Three counties is Stilton uh, legally, per, legally allowed to be legally to be uh, legally permitted to be made in. Yeah. Three counties in England that That's is right. allowed to make it there. So Stilton. Okay, and okay. it'll be a signed, auto, uh, autographed uh -huh. book. Okay, we'll go to a break. We'll okay. be right back. Get Don't Googling, go everybody. <laughs> we'll be right back. Hey, Georgia. Hey, Suzanne. Welcome to Girls Night Out. Did you remember the wine? Of course. After all, we're, we're the, the wine ladies. <laughs> we're in the kitchen. So what wine did you bring? Well, for our Girls Night Out, we brought Girls Night Out. I brought the Chardonnay. I brought the Merlot. Well, my guy bought me this. Too funny. The Rosé. Well, let the party begin. Girls Night Out Wines. Hugely popular VQA wines best enjoyed with friends. Available at the LCBO and other fine retail locations. For more information, go to girlsnightoutwines.com. Hey, Suzanne, it's the only machine that I need. I know, it's a great workout in just a fraction of the time. It made me get excited about workouts again. T-Zone Vibration is making people sit up and take notice. Employing the newest technology and fitness equipment, T-Zone Vibration gives you an hour workout in just 10 minutes. Try it. Believe it. You'll want to bring one home. T-Zone Vibration. Call 905-483-8676. T-Zone Vibration. 905-483-8676. M Beauty Med Spa is constantly researching the latest innovations from around the world and bringing them home to you. It's a wonderful meeting of Eastern philosophies of skin and body care with exciting and innovative Western technology. All the In Beauty Med Spa health and wellness programs are medically supervised. A physician and dietitian are also available for client consultations. In Beauty Med Spa, inspire the nature of beauty. Visit InBeautySpa.com. 